Thank you for joining us tonight as we present a preview of MMI's most comprehensive and foundational fellowship course, Module 8, Clinical Practice Protocols. This course includes interactive case presentations and the opportunity to connect with expert faculty and fellowship co-chairs. We are so excited to have Dr. Heyman with us tonight to highlight clinical cases. Dr. Andrew Heyman is an internationally recognized expert in integrative medicine. He is currently the program director of integrative and metabolic medicine at the George Washington University. Prior to assuming this role, he spent 16 years at the University of Michigan, serving to build one of the largest and most successful academic-based integrative medicine programs in the United States. Dr. Heyman remains clinically active as well as the owner of a four-physician integrative medicine practice in Northern Virginia at the Virginia Center for Health and Wellness. His teaching approach is described as deeply rooted in scientific evidence, grounded in the clinical reality of expert patient care, and readily accessible for both the new learner and the seasoned practitioner alike. Dr. Heyman, thank you so much. I will turn the webinar over to you. Great. Thanks, Lindsay. Thank, everybody. thank you, everyone, for um attending tonight. I know how busy each of you uh, typically are, and um, I'm always honored to have people uh, take a moment and find out what's going on at MMI. And, and I'd like to say that we really are working hard to um, uh, create um, a level of excellence with the education that we offer. And that means applying a certain standard to uh, the quality of each lectures, as well as how content integrates not just within a weekend, but across weekends as well. And from my perspective, the clinical practice protocols of Module 8 represents the pinnacle uh, of that perspective. And that is to say that um, it's a summary, in a sense, of everything that you've learned uh, within the fellowship. And it's a time to synthesize and condense your knowledge and ensure that um, you really have understood the fundamentals and you can apply them successfully in your practices. Um, in some ways, the, the title itself um, is something that I struggle with because you know protocols to me sounds almost like a cookbook or an algorithm. And we all know uh, for what we do, our patients can be relatively complex and there, always, there isn't always a right answer. Um, but uh, with that being said, uh, this module is really designed to be the practical application uh, of the entire fellowship. And so we've assembled an expert faculty drawn from uh, each of the first seven modules, uh, which are uh, specifically content-based, and uh, they've been asked to lead that particular section uh, for the weekend. Um, we're also working very hard to change uh, the format uh, with respect to how we deliver information and to make sure that it's more sort of multimedia focused. Um, to that extent, I'm incredibly excited about what's coming up uh, in May. We've never done anything like this before at this level, and my sincere hope is that it's something very special for each of you, and I would strongly um, suggest that you attend. So the objectives as we define them for this particular module uh, demonstrate and apply principles of effective therapeutic relationship skills, analyze physician-patient interactions, and develop rapport through empathy, compassion, and active listening techniques. Uh, in addition, uh, synthesize, discuss, and present complex cases that represent summary concepts uh, for modules one to seven in patients utilizing comprehensive assessment and treatment recommendations based in metabolic and nutritional medicine. Uh, work effectively in groups to demonstrate capacity for interdisciplinary, cross-professional collaboration while respecting clinical, cultural, and social differences. Apply a systems biology model to clinical cases to create multi-dimensional treatment plans. Compare and contrast the clinical approaches of integrative, functional, and anti-aging treatment methods in cases. And evaluate live patient demonstrations and apply knowledge and clinical decision making from all modules of the fellowship to implement proper therapeutic assessment and planning. So, for those of you who know me and they know you know my lecture style, I don't like really um, I don't like reading slides. Uh, but for this for this uh, piece, I felt like it was important to um, just let the words speak for themselves. And, and that is to say, from the ground up, we are uh, very much focused on 
uh, certain uh, elements of how we want you to learn and the way in which we're going to deliver content over the course of uh, the weekend. So if you listen closely and you, 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 know, you are looking at those uh, objectives, uh, we'll be showing videotapes, uh, we'll be doing group work, we'll be having direct faculty involvement, and we're going to have live patient cases. Um, so all of this together is meant to solidify uh, the learning that you've accumulated over the course of the fellowship and uh, to give you plenty of opportunity to apply it in a uh, real world sort of setting. So what I'm going to do now is go through uh, what I think is probably going to be the final schedule and, and give some uh, flavor to it. So I'll start the first day with uh, reviewing a topic that I think is incredibly important and often overlooked. This is something that we spend quite a bit of time on in my master's program at George Washington University, and that is looking at the dimensions of uh, the therapeutic relationship. How do we connect with the patient? How do we analyze the sort of uh, verbal cues and nonverbal cues that they're showing us? Uh, do we really understand their agenda? Does the patient have a hidden agenda? Are we deploying um, um, elements of connection such as empathy and compassion and good listening skills using open-ended questions and closed-ended questions? So I'll go over some of the evidence base for uh, what's suggested as an adequate model for defining and executing a good therapeutic relationship. Uh, and then we'll look at some videos of physician-patient interactions. Uh, these have been well vetted. Uh, we use them in my curriculum at GW. I have my students analyze various elements of them. We'll talk about what we saw and whether or not uh, the physician was able to fully connect with the patient and elicit uh, a, a strong uh, relationship uh, with that person. Um, so this whole kind of intake process um, and getting to know the patient is key. It's not just enough to give you clinical knowledge. I want to start making sure that you have additional professional assets and tools, and that means um, regardless of the kind of clinical problem that the patient presents with, uh, how do you sort of cement that relationship and utilize good communication skills? So we'll also talk about what is the structure of the MMI intake. How does it differ from a conventional intake? How does it differ from other sorts of intakes? Um, so that it sets the framework for where do I put information as I uh, begin to think about my patient and how do I structure it intellectually and begin to make sense out of it. Then we move on to Dr. Laval and uh, so we quickly uh, begin to embrace notions of lifestyle medicine. And that is to say, how do people eat? How do they move? How do we sustain their uh, healthy behaviors over time? And so Jim is going to uh, be very clear about uh, selecting diet in various cases, assigning diet, uh, troubleshooting with patients, having you uh, experience some online tools and technology to apply diet uh, with the leverage of you know, all of the you know, new resources we have at our disposal uh, with apps and uh, systems and that sort of thing, and uh, how do we assess and apply uh, exercise in our clinical practice, which I think if we admit, uh, many of us are not very good at. You know, where do we start with the patient? How do we get them moving? How do we grade their improvement over time? And how do we ensure uh, success? And that means both addressing their uh, sort of behavioral starting point and their willingness to comply uh, as well as the actual activities themselves. So we're going to uh, take a pretty deep dive in that regard, and I'm, I'm excited because you know, I feel like it's so foundational, and this is why we put that up front, and we're going to make sure that you, you learn these topics extremely well. One of the things that um, I think you'll notice, too, is that the way we're breaking out the entire weekend is uh, once we get into the content areas that reflect the module, so obviously module five is nutrition and exercise, uh, we're really only asking the speakers to limit their uh, lecture time to about an hour. We feel that that's enough time to summarize what occurred over the course of that particular module and elicit key points, ensure that uh, those points are highlighted in your mind, and then we at least two hours going over cases. And so um, the casework will be in group format and not only will you have the main lecturer there, you'll have additional faculty members likely circulating. And in addition to that, uh, if, if we're able to um, uh, do what I would like to do, 
we will be reaching out and selecting some additional facilitators. Um, these will be people that have already attended quite a few MMI weekends uh, that we know quite well who are uh, experts clinically already but maybe haven't lectured yet, but we're going to be inviting a group of people to sit in and help group discussion in cases. Um, so there will be a network of um, individuals at your disposal, not just from the individual lecturer, but uh, sort of a circulating group of, of people who can act as a resource for you. In addition to the way cases are formulated, we'll certainly give you background, uh, but also you'll be distributed um, all the relevant lab testing and, and studies uh, that you'll need to analyze that case. We are asking in terms of case development of all of our speakers to ensure that we uh, draw uh, labs and, and, and um, studies directly from our own clinics or uh, from colleagues of ours so that you know exactly what we're looking at in real time when we see patients on a daily basis. This will not be something that's just on PowerPoint. Uh, it'll be uh, something that actually represents uh, active clinical practice. Then for the afternoon, We'll switch gears out of uh, the lifestyle topics and uh, we'll get into uh, hormones and the endocrine system. Dr. Smith will be reviewing uh, key points uh, from module one and uh, the topical domains include uh, male and female hormones, uh, thyroid function, uh, the stress response and also insulin resistance and diabetes. So the basic set of hormones that we deal with on a daily basis. And we know that you know, when these hormones become imbalanced, they can create a whole slew of not only symptoms, but also risk for other uh, disease states. And you can see how, uh, for this particular section, it's an hour lecture and then three hours of cases because we know this is a big content area. The next morning, uh, we have Dr. Uh, Lipsky presenting, and uh, we will start looking at uh, gastroenterologic function. Um, for this particular domain, again, another four-hour block, one-hour lecture, three cases, because the gut is the crossroads for so many different uh, clinical uh, issues and challenges. So uh, Dr. Lipsky will be uh, covering this in great detail. Again, you'll have faculty members that are circulating. And we'll use this as a basis for getting into some of the other topics, too. We had a discussion earlier today. Uh, uh, among all the faculty members who were speaking during this weekend, and we all agreed that gastro needed to go up first, and we'll be using that as a way of connecting dots into other bodily systems too. So this is how we start weaving in that systems biology approach uh, to show where things can go in terms of really grounding yourself in gut function. We also felt like the next natural step, and sometimes this doesn't come to mind, but we know that this biological relationship happens is cardiovascular disease. So uh, Dr. Saltiel uh, will be uh, reviewing uh, cardiology, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, cardiovascular disease, uh, and, and congestive heart failure, uh, and then again, helping you connect dots um, between all of these elements. And we know, for example, that in your cardiometabolic patients, they typically have hormone imbalances, they have inflammation being driven by the gut, and the expression of that can be through the cardiovascular system. So we purposely put um, CV here in the middle of the first day. Uh, and then we will uh, end the day with a beginning approach for uh, toxicology and detox. We felt like uh, this is a really important topic, but we wanted you to get through gastroenterology and cement uh, that particular uh, content area in terms of preparing the gut uh, for individuals who need to be detoxified. And of course, this intersects with hormones as well as uh, cardiovascular issues. So exposure such as chemicals and heavy metals have a direct impact on insulin resistance and heart disease. Um, so we wanted you to encounter those other topics first, and then we'll get into, okay, now you have that hypertensive, overweight, diabetic patient who's uh, had multiple exposures, and you've prepared their gut you've improved their risk factors, you've begun to balance their hormones and manage their stress, but how do you start draining them of their heavy metals and, and chemicals? And then our final day, um, we will um, get into um, additional topics, so neurology um, and uh, the central and peripheral nervous system. Dr. Stuhler will be covering this. 
And, and from my perspective, sort of all roads eventually lead to the brain. And we know inflammation and cardiac issues and GI problems and exposures and toxins and so on and so forth ultimately create central nervous system changes. And so we'll look at that both from the mood perspective as well as cognitive issues and its intersection with the immune system, the gut, uh, and other, uh, other physiologic uh, domains. Um, and then we'll have uh, Jim finish up on detox cases. Uh, and we really want to make sure that you know how to properly uh, identify, assess, and safely remove toxins from your patients. This is really important as sort of a summary topic. And then I'll finish uh, with immune dysfunction. Uh, I will be looking at the innate immune system as well as the adaptive or acquired. So biotoxic exposures, innate immune activation, as well as autoimmune diseases, and then what to do about them. And then we'll end the weekend uh, with a live patient demonstration. So we want to show you in real time, how do you interview a patient? We have covered that in the first lecture. How do we address lifestyle issues and behavior change? And then um, how do we do the workup properly, assess their labs, and then deliver a plan? And for those lucky few who've really been paying attention, we probably will select some people from the audience to actually deliver plans uh, to the live patient or two. Uh, so this is really the summary or capstone of not just the weekend, but for the entire fellowship. And that is to say, you'll demonstrate to us that um, you really know how to synthesize information, apply concepts, and deliver a plan that uh, therapeutically makes sense for uh, a patient. So in summary, uh, this weekend will reflect key learning points for modules 1 to 7. Uh, you'll learn to assess and treat complex patients utilizing advanced integrative functional and anti-aging therapies. I think this is one of the things that really uh, distinguishes us uh, in terms of our breadth of knowledge and depth of clinical experience because, yes, there's overlap in terms of what these uh, labels mean, but ultimately each of us have certain strengths and areas that we draw on. For myself and Dr. Laval and Dr. Lipsky, uh, certainly we're sort of functional in our approach, but I would say we're very, very integrative uh, with my background in Chinese medicine and acupuncture and manual therapy and my body skills and Jim's work in homeopathy and, and so on and so forth, um, we'll be injecting that flavor throughout the weekend. Uh, so don't feel like you're just going to get a one-size-fits-all, and we'll probably be selecting key cases over the course of the three days and show you, in a sense, how to solve them from each of these three various perspectives. What would an integrative practitioner do? What would a functional practitioner do? What would an anti-aging practitioner do with the same patient? So we really want to show um, how you might look at things differently and begin to move a patient uh, forward. Uh, again, a rich use of various educational tools, video, discussion, group work, live patients, all of which I think is really important uh, for you to have a rich experience of um, <clears throat> the weekend. There's obviously a very significant emphasis on case-based learning. Uh, to us, that's critical. It's the major focus of the weekend. We want to limit lecture time and really expand uh, discussion time uh, with your groups under the uh, watchful eye of faculty and facilitators to make sure that you stay on track, you uh, demonstrate your uh, grasp of key learning points, and you're able to apply them in a practical way. So you'll be working directly with faculty and facilitators to synthesize that information, apply concepts in practice, and ensure therapeutic success. So this is, uh, for me, uh, the representation of uh, a lot of work, a lot of thinking, a lot of help from many different experts that we're drawing on from the fellowship. Um, and uh, we think that this will be something very special for each of you to participate in um, because of the way it's organized and executed and our enthusiasm uh, for this particular module. Um, so I'll stop there. If there's any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Great. And if anyone does have a question, feel free to use your chat option. Um, Dr. Heyman, I don't see any questions coming in at this time because you did such a fantastic job. Um, if you have any closing remarks, Dr. Heyman, um, feel free to um, to close out. But uh, we thank you so much, everyone, for attending this.